<laughs> Hopefully this is working. <laughs> Loving the glasses, Armand. <laughs> Thank you. Got being absolutely shattered. But Today's oh. live on Facebook now. Mm. Okay, great. So we're live on Facebook. Brilliant. Amazing. So let's get started. Hi everyone, it's Eleanor here from Professional Beauty. Welcome back to our live webinar series. Today, we are, this session is sponsored by Anika Organic and we'll be discussing clean, natural and organic beauty with our panel of experts here today. So on our panel, we are joined by Georgia Barnes, Beauty and Wellbeing Business Development Manager at the Soil Association, cruelty-free makeup artist Armand Beasley and skincare expert and, and facialist Lisa Franklin. Thanks to everyone who's joined mm -hmm. us today. And um, for everyone watching, we'll have a bit of time at the end for your Q&A. So please do send any questions in that you have. So if we can kick things off, there is a lot of interest now in natural, clean and organic beauty now. Um, I'd love to know your each of your thoughts on why that is. Georgia, would you like to start? Yeah, of course. So hello, everyone. Um, and thanks very much for the invitation. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, look, we've seen a huge boom, especially in certified organic beauty. So year on year, we saw a 23% increase um, in, in certified organic beauty sales. And I think a large portion of that has come from conscious consumerism. So this kind of massive trend around environmental awareness and, you know, the Greta Thunberg effect, the, the Blue Planet effect, whatever you want to call it, has really started to kind of switch people's mindsets to, right, OK, what is the impact of the product that I'm buying to the world around me, as well as my holistic? health and well-being um, we conducted some research and I'll pepper these stats through as, as we go but 92% of people that we asked uh, said that choosing organic made them feel like they were making a positive choice and I think it's that reinforcement of what the organic industry represents to consumers as well as its kind of material positive impact on the environment and when you put those things together you end up with um, this rise and this engagement with organic beauty. Amazing. And um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I also think, uh, as well as the highlights on the environment that we've been seeing in, in recent years, I think it's increasing health challenges people are having mm. um, that are forcing them to perhaps look in different directions, look at the food that they're eating, look at the, the lives that they're leading, the stress that they're under, um, and the, the products that they're putting on their skin and doing their own research and taking charge of their own bodies and, um, and making informed decisions themselves. So, um, and it's starting to get momentum. I mean, every year I go to the Natural Products and Organic show and I know at Professional Beauty, you have the Organic and Natural Expo as well. And we're seeing increased footfall there and a wider spectrum of people that are being drawn into organic and natural. I mean, I'm sure you'll agree, Georgia, that that's, the footfall is increasing and increasing, but the demographic is getting wider and wider. Definitely. It's becoming more mainstream, you know, and I think as brands continue to kind of join the organic beauty movement, accessibility is getting easier. So you've got brands such as Garnier Organics, for example, launching their certified organic range last year, which just kind of opens the market wide open for um, a whole new range of people to trial these products and realize that actually they work and that there's no need for their to use kind of the synthetic alternatives when nature has actually got a lot of the solutions that people are looking for. Absolutely. Lisa, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with uh, Georgia and Armand. And just to add to that a little bit, it's consumers are more informed due to the internet. You know, they use the information to make more improved choices. Absolutely. Um, I also think in general, people are living a more healthy lifestyle. It's trendy to be healthy, uh, especially the younger audience. And then obviously the older audience are catching up with that because it's kind of, it's... Um, it, it, you know it's obviously a feel good thing uh, so it's a, a, a huge positive impact I also think people are more conscious about the environment uh, massively and making sure the purchases that, that they actually make don't cost theft. Um, that's a you know a really strong one and um, also uh, there's uh, been plenty of mistrust in larger brands and the ingredients that they use take parabens and microbeads for an example absolutely and it's interesting as well, because I think while there is a growing interest in this area, many in the industry, as well as our customers or clients of ours, 
can be quite confused by the differences between each of these terms. I wondered if you can share maybe what some of the key differences are between natural, organic and clean beauty. Georgia, would you like to start? Yeah, of course. So uh, I agree, you know, and I think it is arguably one of the biggest challenges to the sector is that we haven't got clear definitions of, of what brands mean when they're saying organic or natural or clean, and it leads to a huge amount of confusion. So as a consumer, you really want to be living an organic, holistic, natural lifestyle. And actually you get to the, to the shop or, or onto the website and you can't quite work out you know, which ones have just got 1% of organic ingredients, which ones have been independently verified, all that kind of thing. Um, and that, to be honest, is where the Soil Association come in. And that's where we kind of feel like we're adding real value to the conversation by providing sort of a rule book and a benchmark for actually this is how we define the principles of organic and these are the the standards that we adhere to and um, so the soil association certify beauty products to the cosmos standards which is a globalized a global harmonized uh, standard uh, that's available and growing at a phenomenal rate i mean it, it launched in 2017 and i think there's 35,000 products now certified to the standard um, and that's because people are looking for products that match the principles of organic so it's not just about for us it's not just about a percentage of organic in there and then that's that we make sure that we're checking things like the packaging we're making sure that there's no animal testing that the supply chains are completely transparent uh, the biodiversity is protected you know and it's kind of linking up all of the principles of organic under one umbrella and that's how we kind of define our organic beauty products we then also do have a, a certification and a standard for natural and all of the organic principles remain, but we decided to kind of pick up the Cosmos natural element as well because we felt like that area needed definition. So for us, we think it's still the same principles of organic because organic is ultimately, you know, the original state of nature, isn't it? You know, it's no unnecessary chemicals and all that kind of stuff, but it just doesn't have that percentage of the 95% organic threshold that the organic products require. Mm. And that helps to cover things like bath salts or clays or minerals or things that haven't been through an organic farming process because our organic is, you know, by its definition, a, a farming process. Um, so if it's naturally occurring, it would sit under the natural certification. And then in terms of clean, to be honest, as a as a scheme, we don't touch it. We feel like it's it's um it's a marketing claim and it's a subjective thing that we it means so many different things to so many people that if you're looking for a product that is clean in, in your terms, it might be different in someone else's. So we would always kind of recommend to look for organic or natural as kind of the benchmarks. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, with the clean thing, because it does mean different things to different people. Lisa, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on that actually that's definitely so I'll start with the clean beauty first actually uh, clean beauty is not necessarily organic or natural but the products are deemed safe and uh, back the, it's a balance between natural and um, so safe synthetic so I, I just think like Georgia commented I, I mentioned um, it again comes back to uh, people being you know informed correctly so it's education really um, Clean, clean beauty is not necessarily, um, you know, the products are free from sulfates, parabens, uh, petroleum, um, artificial colouring, synthetic fragrances, and must be, and they have to, um, clean beauty have to list um, potential allergens um, for people. So it's, you know, there's, again, it's, um, it's definitely a movement. Um, like Georgia commented, that it's gaining a lot of momentum um, at the moment, especially. It's all about, but it's all about safety um, for the consumer and the environment, ultimately. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, um, and, and like, again, natural, um, it's the most used description and tends to mean plant based uh, product. It only has to have 1% of naturally sourced ingredients to comply with the use of the term. So again, it's just interesting um, and it's people, you know, kind of going online and kind of not being, you know, kind of looking at maybe the correct um, information. So it's going to a professional uh, that they trust um, and actually having the education on uh, sort of packaging and how to kind of read that into sending order, uh, for example. Another thing, like I mean, 
obviously touching on organic. Uh, it's a much uh, like the soil association. It's it's um, a very strict definition as formulated using organically farmed ingredients. Um, like uh, again, Georgia um, mentioned. Uh, grown without the use of GMO ingredients, it, herbicides, synthetic fertilizers. However, unless the product has been certified by a recognized body, such as Cosmos, then a product can claim to be organic, even if it only has a tiny percent of organic material. So I just think it's, uh, it's an interesting time. And it is that lack of legal regulation, isn't it? That just causes so much confusion. And I think yeah. people are just outraged when they realise that actually there are no legal regulations in the same way that there are in food. Absolutely. Um, it's scary, really, when you think that, you know, we asked this question as part of our consumer research and we found that over 50% of people didn't realise that there were no legal regulations to mirror organic and, food. And, yeah, and it hasn't been updated in our industry since 1938. I mean, I mean, I just love all this knowledge, but it's just, um, it's just incredible. So it's yeah. just that I actually, I'm quite excited about this movement at the moment because I think it's, um, it, it's a, a, lot, a positive change at the moment. Yeah. It feels optimistic, doesn't it? Definitely. Mm. Armand, what are your thoughts as a makeup artist on this? Well, I, I've been interested in the organic and natural movement now for probably about 10 years. And I've been a cruelty-free makeup artist for, um, I think, about seven of those years now. Um, and for me, I, I don't like the term clean beauty. I find it, um, it doesn't resonate with me personally. And I think a lot of it tends to be a bit of a fad. Um, mm. I like the whole idea of organic and I like natural and I like the way that Cosmos has um, encapsulated a very, very clear and some not-for-profit organisation as well, which I think is very important that you've got an independent body there that's regulating. So you do have some sort of transparency. So for anybody watching, if they want to know about um, the differences you go into the Soil Association site or the Cosmos site and you'll get them listed down what organic mm. means, what natural means, mm. and look for the logo. If you're unsure about a product, put it down. If it hasn't got a logo, at least you know with something like um, Soil Association logo uh, or even they True or Cosmos, it is an independently governed body. They've checked it out for you. They know about where the products come from. They know the whole from the earth to consumer journey for the product. It's regulated and you can trust in the symbols. Amazing. So good. Completely. And, and, and look, I just want to also kind of uh, direct people to our Instagram page as well. If you do want to know about more brands that are certified, we, we've got a, an Instagram page, Soil Association Beauty, um, and that gives loads of information about what organic means, but also some kind of light touch content about the sorts of brands that are out there. So definitely get in touch with us. Amazing. And I, I think we've kind of touched on this a little bit already, but what are some of the ways that we can communicate and educate our clients about these different terms? Um, a lot of people who will be watching this are salon mm -hmm. or business owners. So I think as this movement's beginning to really pick up a pace, how we can kind of educate our clients and our customers best. Armand, would you like to start? Um, I think it's looking at bodies like Soil Association and reading the material there, attending things like um, the Organic and Natural Expo at Professional Beauty, um, or even the Natural Products and Organic Expo at Excel that happens once a year, and just researching and finding out themselves. Um, you can also, if you wanted to look into um, nutrition side of things, as well as the skin side of things, then there's uh, bodies like uh, College of Natural Medicine. You can go down that route as well. So it's educating yourself. Um, I think, you know, the internet is marvelous, but there is a lot of misinformation on there. And there can be a lot of conflict and information out there as well. So that's why it's good to go to an independent regulating body and, and have a look at what they have to say. Mm -hmm. And so you can find more transparency there. Definitely. Lisa, what are your thoughts on that? Again, uh, I did comment on it, uh, which you picked up on before, actually. Um, it's, it comes down to we should educate our clients to read labels and how to read labels. Ingredients are listed in descending order of percent. Uh, be careful about misinformation, like uh, Armin said on the net. They are, there are useful um, sites that I um, 
I'm trying to think a couple of things that come to my mind because uh, Armin mentioned a couple. I think uh, environmental working groups, uh, Skin Deep, a couple that have initially come to my mind, but there are quite a few really good ones, you know? And again, mm -hmm. it's just being, um, and, and then having the confidence where, you know, and how to find this information. So again, the Soil Association, like George said, get in touch. We as a brand have a huge responsibility in what, the way we work. And um, please, I'd love to hear from you. So again, get in touch. We'd love to be of support. Amazing. Georgia, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, look, I'd like to just kind of mirror mirror their points. I think look for the logo, and I have actually got my hand cream here. I thought I'd just show a visual so that so that the guys know what they're looking for. So so this here is the Soil Association logo, which shows that we've certified it, and that's the standard that we've certified too, which is the independent one that Armand was talking about earlier. I think another thing to to remember is that there are lots of brands out there doing a really good job, but they haven't yet got to the certification process, or they're just starting out, or they're brand new. So I think get in touch with your brand. If you want to know more about the product, ask them and hold them to account and, and, and open up that dialogue. I think as more brands join this, this movement, we are going to see more purpose driven brands living authentically and, and putting business practices in that they really that they really mean. So, you know, build a relationship with your brand uh, and, and the brand will respect that and respond to that. Yeah, and it's about being loyal, isn't it? So Definitely. Yeah, you know, support those brands that you know are doing the right thing um, and share their share their content, you know, buy, buy your friend a gift that is a certified organic beauty product and kind of get involved in all the different ways in which you can support kind of the whole movement of organic as well as just thinking about, you know, which skincare product is, is right for me. It's traceability, isn't it, at the end of the day? I know when, because I recently set up, my brand, which is um, Pro Body Glow, so it's 100% natural high shine body balm. But obviously as a new brand, you can't always afford to go for certification, but you can do the traceability with where your products are coming from. I know exactly where all my ingredients have come from. There's only six of them. Um, I know the carbon footprint, and that's the thing. If, you, if there's a product or a brand that you're particularly interested in, There'll be a number there, there'll be a contact there. As Georgia said and Lisa said, contact them, they will be able to tell you everything, mm. where their ingredients are coming from, That's so you can then make an informed decision. Brilliant. So when in doubt, ask the questions directly Always. to the brand. Always. Yeah. Amazing. And I wonder if we can talk through what some of the benefits are of, of organic and natural beauty, um, makeup and skincare, um, just because I'm not sure how many people watching might know what the differences are between um, these different areas. So perhaps, Armand, would you like to start with what the benefits are of makeup in this area? Well, again, I personally think your, your makeup is only as good as your skin. So I always start with the skin first. Um, Skincare is very, very important to me as a makeup artist. So getting your skincare right, I, I'm a great believer of balance. So I use a lot of brands. Um, not all of them are organic. Not all of them are natural, but most of them, have, they haven't got the narcissism, basically. So I'm a big believer of um, layering. So if you're layering different brands and you have multiple parabens in there and multiple ingredients that or harsh chemicals in there, that is going to have a negative impact on you. So it's knowing your ingredients. Um, when it comes to makeup, definitely mineral powders for me are a big, big winner. So I know um, you mentioned Anika, uh, Anika Organic. So this is in my kit. Um, they are a certified brand They're from Australia. Very good, um, especially their powder foundation, which is um, SPF 25, really good. So I use the Dr. Hauschka is, is pretty good as well. They're certified by Nature. Um, that's their foundation here. Um, Kaya Weiss as well. She has a really interesting policy. Sorry, it's a bit bright. This is their refill basically um, of their lipstick. So she's a, an American um, makeup artist and she does some really good stuff. What else have I got here? Um, so it's just really looking at products. Um, the foundation for me is the most important one because that's going right next to the skin. I think you can cut corners a little bit with um, 
blusher and powders. But I think when it comes to anything with a liquid format, um, the, the chance of penetration is, is higher, especially if you've got chemical compounds with them that can make it go into the skin a little bit more. Um, nail varnish is pure bizarre that I tend to use in my kit. Sorry, can you see that? Uh, pure bizarre. That's a, a really nice um, clean. Well, I use the word clean. Um, <laughs> it's a really nice nail varnish that um, has minimal um, chemical compounds in there. So they're the kind of things that I use. So it's just a question of making it simplistic for yourself. Focus on your skincare first and foremost personally, and then with makeup, because you've got something next to your skin. I mean, up to 60% of what you put onto your skin, depending on the molecular structure, will go into your system. So putting something good next to your skin, next to a clean skin, is imperative. And then you can layer up and you can have fun with eyeshadows. Because as a makeup artist, I think what's lacking in the organic world at the moment is, is shadows, eyeshadows, and color with really good pigment because usually they're, they're very chemical. So that's that's where you have to cut corners and that's where you have to think, okay, what am I doing here? And get that balance for yourself. That's interesting. Lisa, as a facialist, what do you think some of the benefits are of switching to this area of beauty and skincare? I was just loving um, listening to the it, um, what Armin was using then. It was a bit of a blast from the past, actually. Inica, I, I used Inica over 20 years ago when I was uh, sort of doing more makeup at that time. It's just, uh, and again, I've seen that brand grow. Uh, they have so many more credentials now and it's just fabulous. So, and then obviously that leads me on to the skincare element because being a rosacea sufferer myself, I understand what it's like firsthand to, to want to have something that's comfortable and to make you confident with the skin. So it's really important, um, like Armin said, you get your skincare correct. And you know, what you put on the skin goes into the skin. So it's the education comes back into this. So I just think um, you need to uh, find someone you trust um, a facialist, a skincare, you know, professional uh, that you trust, and you build this relationship up because it because it is a relationship, and it's all about the quality of the ingredients. So again, it's like na this natural um, ingredients. Again, it's organic. Again, it's clean beauty. Cl don't you know? Clean is a positive word. Uh, you know, they're not they're deemed safe. It's just again, it's just you know what to look for. So again, it's the education coming in, but generally the main advantage, you know, the actual question you originally asked was the main advantage of switching to certified organic, natural and clean, uh, clean is to remove toxins, uh, fewer chemicals and toxins promotes healthier skin and body. And that's the ultimate message here. It's everybody wants to feel great. Um, you know, you're more confident. It's about self-care, especially at these unprecedented times, but absolutely everybody, it's really important. Absolutely. It's critical, isn't it? And I, and I think, you know, just to build on those points, the, the all the different brands that, that you guys are talking about as experts in your field, it's evidence that it works. So I think, you know, take the sustainability and the environmental uh, sort of positive vibes to one side. Actually, these products work. And if you don't need to be using a synthetic chemical that, that penetrates your skin and that, that goes into your bloodstream, or for example, you know, with, with shampoo that, that has contains microplastics then goes into the waterways and then, and then affects our environment. If you can find a product that does what you need it to do first, and then also has been wider benefits and wider implications, that's gotta be a good thing. And I think brands are really switching onto that and, and science is catching up as well. So we're able now to articulate that a lot of these naturally derived ingredients are the active ingredients as well. So you've got Voya Skincare who, who are gonna be at Professional Beauty this year. And, you know, they're using seaweed as their, as their active ingredient and, that, and they've been able to prove that the antioxidants within that seaweed formulation go into the skin. Um, and, pro and produce positive benefits. So I think it's, it's balancing the fact that, you, you know, you want to tread lightly on the planet and also you need a product that works. 
Yeah, it's about performance, you know, as well. That's the thing. Definitely. So it's, it, you know, being formulating my own products, it's actually, it's about a mix of ingredients coming together, you know, just because it, it's not, you know, it can't be 100% organic, you know, it's, it can't be 100% natural. And again, it's all about education, isn't it? You know, so it's, you know, to have peptides or these amazing actives, you know, it's, it, it's just an incredible time, you know, to put all that together. Um, it, it, there's amazing science, you know, it, you know, it's uh, biotechnology has changed the narrative, actually, for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Amazing. Um, I know that Georgia, you touched there a, a bit about the environment and how this area of beauty can really kind of benefit our environment more and our world as a as a whole. I wonder if we can talk a little bit more about how it can benefit things like the environment or our society and people who work in this industry. Yeah, definitely. So I think you know, taking a step back from from the beauty industry specifically, organic as wherever it sits within any of the sectors has positive environmental implications. So if you reduce your exposure to potentially harmful pesticides, either in food, farming, textiles, you know, what you're wearing, what you're putting on your skin, um, you are gonna feel healthier. And, and over 320 pesticides are routinely used in non-organic farming versus organic farming. And that then links its way back into ingredients that, that are going into your beauty products as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, the quality of the products are nutritionally different from a food point of view, which, you know, again, kind of marries up with that point that organic ingredients are effective. Um, we know that it's a less carbon intensive process. So if you're thinking about your impact on the planet, um, you know, several years ago, we used to start about how if all of UK farms converted to organic, it would re it would remove 3.2 million tons of carbon mm. from the world, which is the equivalent of a million cars off the road. You know, it, it reduces the amount of impact you have on the environment, which then protects wildlife. So um, you've got more bees, more birds, more butterflies, which improves biodiversity and just helps create this more sustainable way of living. Um, obviously, you know, cruelty free is very important. And you know that when something's organic, if it does contain an animal byproduct, which in beauty, it very, very rarely does. Um, that animal has had a happier and healthier life because of those higher, higher levels of standards. So I think all of those principles of organic are met within the beauty industry as well and then as well as as well as those when you're buying a certified product things like the packaging are tested and checked and there there has to you have to meet thresholds on the minimum amount of packaging used and that you use the most amount of recycled and recyclable content um, so it, the whole process and the whole journey is all about sustainability. Um, and that's kind of the key link, really, I think, and, and why we're seeing so much interest and so much traction in the sector, because organic answers so many different sustainability aims mm. that people have got. That's interesting. Armand, have you got any points that you'd like to add to that? No, I think George, you hit it on the head. <laughs> you know, something I feel quite passionate about. So don't get me started. <laughs> it really is amazing. It is about um, looking into things yourself and taking control of yourself. And um, and yeah, I, ju I just think exactly what you said, George. I think it is that, and that makes a massive difference to people when you can. Um, look into the ingredients and look into the products yourself as lisa touched on the inky list really important mm. um, knowing what each thing does um, and then touching base with the brands themselves that's Definitely. interesting lisa what do you think I, I well i think fewer toxins in skincare means fewer toxins in the environment as they are washed down the sink Think about it from this perspective, leading to polluted waters and create dead zones in the sea. So for instance, using environmentally safe sunscreens will prevent the coral reefs dying off and minimize the risk to sea life in those environments. I mean, skincare, think about it. So why, you know, everybody act now because think about your skincare, you know, clean up because it's like when you're washing your face, where do you think it's going? So I think it's a really, this is a, it's a really fantastic question. And, and I think everybody like Georgia is very passionate. We're all passionate about this. And I think it's really important. We, we hope we're having a positive influence on everybody. 
Lisa, that's a really good point about mm -hmm. uh, certainly with coral bleaching. And um, that's why one of the brands that I use is the Green People Sun Care yeah. brand. Yeah. Uh, of course, they're sort of associated and they donate to the Marine Conservation Society as well. So brands that give back. Yeah, we, we give back. We, we, we've been part of Positive Luxury since 2017 and every year we get the award. It's not easy um, to do that. We, we have a commit. We have a beautiful loyalty scheme in the clinic for all our gorgeous clients that come bring our packaging back uh, we take five pound off their next purchase and it goes into skin cancer so they're giving back in one way because for skin you know and then we're giving money back we're, all our packaging is 100% recyclable we are a very sustainable brand everything that we do is really been meticulously thought out it's really important to me ever such a a child I've been it's about the environment and about be doing the right thing but wanting to do the right thing so it's just impact that because we have such an impact you know um I just think it's people making better choices it really is I think it's um, interesting that sorry go on no no we we and we have a choice that's the thing it's just maybe you know is it because people are time poor or they're ignorant? I don't know, you know? So it's just like, I would, I, I want to help everybody. And that's what my brand is all about. It's about education. It's about, you know, um, caring for everybody. And it is, it's, um, we want everyone to feel great and not good, great. And that's, uh, you know, with all my staff, it's a, it's a positive environment. It's, um, and then it has a positive effect, you know, on everything that we do. So it's really important to do the right thing. I just wanted to build on Lisa's, Lisa's comment that she said, you know, it's not easy. And I think it's, it's, it's not. not. <laughs> and the brands that are making <laughs> these authentic, yeah, yeah, you know, and the brands that are making these authentic decisions are often making yeah. really difficult ones. They're yeah. making maybe more expensive ones or ones it's that take expensive. longer, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and they're difficult business decisions when you're coming at it from a traditional kind of profit and loss point of view. But if you're coming at it as a purpose driven brand, which more and more people are trying to do, you kind of come at it from a slightly different angle. So you've got brands that are as passionate as, as Lisa is and and you therefore create a more effective, more sustainable, um, softer product, kinder product, you know, to it's people. Kind to the environment, isn't kinder. it? It's kinder, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is all about beauty and kindness. That's a beautiful sort of thing to bring up, actually. I just think it's like, um, we want to share the love and that's the ultimate thing. And it's not just about women, it's about men and women, you know, um, so it, and all ages, all skins. So it's really just, if you're not sure, get in touch. We're, we're all here to help you and we want to help because I think, um, you know, you're not on your own. Absolutely. I would love to ask each of you what some of the mm -hmm. misconceptions are about organic, natural and clean beauty. Um, I can imagine there's there's quite a few. So perhaps Lisa, you might like to start on this one. <laughs> um, organic ingredients uh, such as water. Um, I think Georgia mentioned something about um, the next thing I'm going to say. But uh, organic ingredients such as water, clay, can't uh, cannot be certified organic. This is many uh, what people find really strange. Um, clay is an inorganic as it is formed from a chemical process in rocks. Uh, water is also inorganic compound and not classed as organic. Unless the product has been certified by a recognized body, a product ca can claim to be organic, even if it is only a tiny percent of organic material. Clean beauty can include safe chemicals. So, Wow, I didn't know that about clay. Yeah. That's really interesting. So clean beauty can include safe chemicals. This uh, does it, you know, so this can be mean, it can be a mis misconception, you know. So again, it's, if you're not sure, then ask. But, you know, clay, you know, rock is a natural element, isn't it? So again, it's just, Exactly. It's a naturally occurring ingredient, isn't it? So it would fit under like yeah. a natural standard, but it couldn't fit within an That's organic one, one. you know, organic being that farming process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Armand, what are your thoughts on that? Well, some of the misconceptions are um, some people think that if it's an organic product, it's not going to be effective. Mm. Um, yeah. The pigments aren't particularly good. Now, Many years ago, when I was trying to 
build up an organic, more organic products in my kit. Because um, I do a lot of red carpets, a lot of celebrities. Um, I was really struggling to get, and I've said this before uh, earlier, that you do still struggle to get really good pigments. Um, that's where probably Anika is one of the, mm. the ones that I tend to yeah. use in my, in my kit. As Lisa said, you know, she's... Um, I still got it in my kit. <laughs> But the same it's a natural I... rock. It doesn't, you know, it's absolutely fine. The colours are just, I never found any eyeshadows with such incredible colour. So I, I still use them because I love makeup. But yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I still think that organic makeup has got a bit of a way to go to catch up. Mm. And, um, you know, formulations are getting better. Um, but I, I think that's a misconception. So. You can still get, I mean, for example, the Kia Weiss um, lipstick in red is stunning. Um, and from a, I know we've been using this word clean beauty, which I don't particularly like, but um, if you're looking at something that doesn't quite fit into the organic and the natural side of things, um, Imani, they do a really nice vegan range, which is no sulfates in there, um, no phthalates in there, no parabens in there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, it's not certified organic and natural. But they are a good brand if you want something that's rich in pigment. Um, and another misconception is poor textures. That for makeup, the textures are going to feel bad. The packaging is going to be really poor and very flimsy. Which for a few years it was, but packaging is improving. Um, but I think it's because they've got such strict guidelines about what to use packaging wise mm. um, that, for example, with, with green people, they have paper packaging when it comes to their makeup, which I'm not a huge fan of the packaging. I think the products are nice. I like the mascara, um, but it, it does get messed up quite quickly in a woman's handbag. So I think that needs to be worked on, but there are so many options out there for people who want to go down the organic and natural route to get something that's quite stylish, um, but also very effective for the skin. And that innovation is just continuing, isn't it? And I think that's the point, you know, as this as the sector continues to grow, you will see improvements and brands are continuing to reformulate and manufacturers are switching on to actually, do you know what, we need to really step up our game here because people really care, they're informed and they want to know more. Well, um, I've spent the last, sorry, George, I've spent the last eight years, sorry, seven years working on a makeup range, Georgia, mm -hmm. and I'm still not quite there yet. So an organic, certified organic, um, a natural makeup range over in Italy. Um, and it is really, really hard because I'm probably my own worst enemy, as you are, Lisa, probably when it comes to... Oh, I was going to say, it took me, I started writing my formulas when I was 17. So I, um, you know, and I, I launched my skincare range, uh, you know, I've had my brand for five years. I'm really proud. And but good things can't be rushed. Uh, there, there is no urgency. It, you know, it's about doing the right thing at the right time. So again, it's, um, I'm not in a rush. I'm really um, comfortable with what I've launched so far um, and because it, it's like, it, it's been really considered, you know, as a whole. So again, it's, um, yeah, I mean, you because I know, you know, the formulas are my own. So, and then I have, you know, my incredible team that help me bring it to life. It's just um, science is evolving. And I think there is this movement that is actually quite exciting. So uh, niche brands like mine, you know, there's a, you know, with a purpose, you know, it might, um, we might be a bit more recognized now. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, within makeup, to, to pick up on Armand's example, yeah. it's the smallest sector and there is the yeah. most amount of work to be done for all the reasons that Armand's mentioned. But therefore, that's where the innovation is happening. And that's yeah. the area to watch as a direct result of that, because people mm -hmm. are beginning to, to switch on to it. I think one thing that I just wanted to kind of add to the conversation is that if you want to get involved in organic and natural beauty brands, don't feel like you can never use anything non-organic again. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's about taking it slowly. Sometimes these products are more expensive they're not always and that's another misconception as accessibility develops and grows you are getting a different price point available to you all the time so keep checking your accessibility sort of things but I think it's about 
being kind to yourself throughout your journey if you want to start making these changes one swap at a time don't change everything all at once because you will end up with adverse reactions which i'm sure the experts will be able to talk about much more but change one thing at a time and check that it works check you're happy with it and then move on to the next thing yeah yeah definitely small steps i think yeah amazing we are coming to the end of our session now so i'll make sure that we go through a couple of questions that we've had from those who are watching um ellie walker has asked are the use by dates affected because the ingredients in products are organic rather than synthetic i know spf is affected but on the whole are they so i guess with use by dates can it differ between organic and non-organic it does i mean as a brand, we uh, you have to have something on the pack. You have to have a shelf life. You know you have to. Um, but um, it, just because it doesn't say it's organic, it doesn't mean um, it's uh, it, you know. It's, sorry, what was the question? Um, are the use by dates affected because the ingredients in the products are organic rather than synthetic? I can't hear. Oh, can you not hear? Sorry. I mean, I can pick that up whilst. Yeah. whilst you're trying to trying to hear these. Um, obviously, every product has um, a period after open symbol, which is a little um, little pots there with a symbol in there. And roughly, they are all the same. Where you will find a difference is in the liquid formulations because they've got obviously less preservatives in there. Um, but usually, uh, say for example, that's a powder, so that's twelve months. Um, but as you're looking, if you're picking up products in a department store of the, and you've seen an organic brand, have a look, compare them to a, um, a, a more mainstream uh, brand. But you see the, the period after opening symbols, certainly within makeup, are very much the same. They are on guidelines. Mascara, mm -hmm. you usually say six months, but I would always get rid of a mascara after three months of using, personally. Um, I don't know, George Elise, if you want to pick up and add to that. I th I'm, it's gone really faint for me, but I think what, what I think the only bit I picked up then is the guidelines. So follow the guidelines. Yeah, the period after opening. Symbol. So if you after you've opened it, exactly. So I mean, if you're unsure, then you know, obviously checking with the brand where you or where you purchased it from. If you're not sure, but definitely uh, there's a date there for a reason, but it is only a guideline. And it's and actually it's how you store your products. Um, you know, it should always be kind of you know at the, the sort of site of um, direct sunlight. So again, I always store mine in in a cabinet in the bathroom. Oh, that's a good idea, George. Have you got anything that you'd like to add to that? No, I think those guys have covered that off. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we've got time for one more question, I think. Um, it's from, um, where can we find genuine lists of brands who are clean or organic? Is there different resources that people can go and have a look at to find out this information? Yep, so we've got a list of certified brands that are available on, on the Soil Association website. So I can share the link with, with yourself, Eleanor, and, and you can share it with your group later, um, which is a really nice resource to go to and have a look. Brilliant. Lisa or Armand, have you got any advice for that question? Again, I just think, um, you know, I think Georgia mentioned, uh, you know, in a previous couple of questions that uh, if pe some brands like myself, we might be going through um, because it's quite a long process, um, uh, you know, to be certified in different areas. You know, we have many credentials personally as a brand, but, you know, things like the Soil Association, we, we've been sort of, you know, in motion with that for many, many months. So it just, again, good things take time. So it, you know, again, you know, we'd love to hear from you to help because uh, again, just because something doesn't say it's organic or natural, it doesn't mean it's not. It's, it's again, it's about education and being informed by the professional. Yeah, and I would like to pick up on what Lisa's just said then. Um, yes, you can get obviously lists from Georgia and the Soil Association about certified organics and, um, and brands that, that they that they certify. Um, but there are some lovely little brands out there that are maybe a fair and wild that, that are um, uh, that can't afford to to go for the um, to go for the certification as yet, you know, just starting out, they're really worthwhile looking into. Um, mm -hmm. 
And it depends on the criteria, what is important to you. And as Georgie said, you know, build up things slowly. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to yeah. go through your kit. Exactly. It's better to have it. Less is more. It's about balance. It's about finding out what's important to you. Now, if what may resonate with you is um, the carbon footprint might be mm. very important to you. The work ethics of, of how everything is farmed, perhaps supporting local. You may have somebody who lives down the road who is so passionate. The other day on my Instagram, I, I interviewed Hannah Salito, um, who was on Dragon's Den, and she formulated her own um, products to, to help uh, overcome her psoriasis. Um, and she did it. But she started from her kitchen table as as did um, the founder the of people. people, Charlotte Voss, I'm sure yourself, Lisa. So yeah. these are people, it's finding out within your community, asking people and saying, do you know of a brand? Do you know where I can get? And then just find out more about their ingredients, where they source it from. And if it resonates with you, if you feel it here, I'm very instinctive, try it, go for it. Start with a little bit. Do your little testing on, on the inside of the arm there if you want to, if you've got super sensitive skin. And then believe in the person, believe in that story, because I think that's what most of us tend to do, whether it's with a hairstylist or whatever, you'll go back to them wherever they go because you believe in them and not only their talent. It's like brands such as mine, we're using biotech methods to merge sustainability with performance. So, you know, it's again, <laughs> It's just a, a really exciting time. Perfect. But mm -hmm. there is a lot of choice out there. There are a lot of choice. And another brand I'd like to flag up, which I think are doing amazing things, a British brand, um, is Skinergy. And they are soil associated as well. Incredible um, pathways they're making into, into skin. Um, so high performing and they're certified organic as well. Amazing. Well, I think that's all we have time for for today. But thank you to everyone watching and thank you to all of our amazing panellists for a great discussion today. I've learned a lot and I'm sure everyone at home has as well. Um, so do join us again for more webinars tomorrow and next week as well. But thank you everyone for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.